the great Whit Merrifield joining us. Whit, we've been talking about this for a long time, man. Like, this is where it's at. How you doing? I'm good, guys. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Whit, dude. Like, I know you're in Dunedin right now. Sun's out, guns out. I mean, geez, you look like Scotty <laughs> Braun with the, with the biceps rocking, man. Those arms yeah, are. I, I, I got over here, and all these guys rock the cutoffs with Bo and Chappie. And, you know, it's like, it's Florida. It's beautiful. Uh, my guys back in Arizona are freezing their balls off. So I figured I'd rub it in and rock the cutoff shirts. That's awesome. Those cutoff shirts are not looking like you're going to steal too many bags this year. It looks like it's going to be some dingers. <laughs> well, it's free agent year. So, you know, bags don't, bags don't, uh, they don't make as much money as Homer's doing that right Todd. No, no, no. Hey, listen. <laughs> well, you're 100% true, man. That's my next question and answer. How's the BP over there? I mean, Vlad Guerrero's got to be putting on a show. Bo Bichette, man. How is it watching the boys there taking BP, especially down there uh, in Florida where you're at? Yeah, it's – I mean, you just you just kind of stop when, when uh, Vladdy's hitting and, and watch and, and see what see what he, he can do and what he does. He's crazy. It's just crazy to watch him. And then, um, I mean, just – Everybody, really. I mean, from Chappie to Bo to, to Vladdy to uh, – I mean, we got guys that just put shows on out there. It's, it's fun to, to be around. Hey, Whit, can you describe your facility you guys have in Dunedin? I was fortunate enough to get a, a tour, I don't know, a month or so ago of that brand-new facility that you guys have. Can you can you just describe, like, the the labs they have? They have hitting labs everywhere. They got pitching labs. They got this weight room that's, like, the size of, like, a baseball field. They got indoor – they got indoor everything. Like, can you ex- explain to people what the facility in Dunedin looks like now? It's crazy. It is crazy. They they have done it right here. Um, it the the one thing that's a little was took me a little bit to get used to was the the game field is down the road. This is a different facility than where we play our games. Uh, so that was a little that was a little odd. But I mean, we got everything and anything you can imagine um, from barbershop to to uh, everything in the in the hydro room that you can imagine, we got a little. Po- I'm actually about to go get in this uh, little pod that you float in um, and relax. So that'll be that'll be fun. And we just got this machine in our hitting hitting lab that you can plug in the pitcher. It's a big screen. The machine moves to the arm slot of the pitcher, and the machine will grab the ball. Uh, we'll grab the laces the way the pitcher would. Like so, he's throwing a slider. The machine will hold the, will, will take the ball and turn it, and then you'll see the pitcher go through his motion. And then right when he gets to release, the ball will come out, and it, the spin is exact, the velocity is exact, and it can throw it wherever, wherever so, it wants to. So, so it's a six hundred thousand dollar machine. So naturally, we we bought two of them. Cause <laughs> Wait, yeah. how much is it? How much is it? Six hundred k, you said? Yeah, six hundred thousand. So, so, so with, yeah. so did the Blue Jays, I don't know, people out there don't know this. Your dad, he works at Wake Forest, right? He works for Wake Forest baseball team. Yeah. So yeah. what, who has a better facility, the Blue Jays or Wake Forest lab? Because he was, I, I don't know, even if you know this, and I played golf with your dad not that yeah. long ago and he was yeah, bragging on like, their facility. And I'm like, man, if it's better than the Blue Jays, he's like, we got everything. So, so who's better Wake Forest or the Blue Jays? Well, Wake's got the pitching lab right now. Uh, I think they're the next phase of their development is supposed to be the hitting lab, similar to what the Blue Jays have got. But their pitching lab right now is, I think it's it's next to next to none. I know a lot of big leaguers come down and and, and get work in there in the off season to to get all their you know whatever looked at. Um, it's it's a, it's really good for for pitchers to go and and uh, get a feel for what their arms doing and where they could be susceptible to injury. And, um, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. If, if, if you're a baseball guy and a pitching guy, I would highly, highly recommend going and checking it out. So can you beat your dad in golf? Cause he was, he was um, bragging you up now. He was saying what a good golf. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, he's pretty good. Um, I, it's, it's a pretty fair fight at this point. <laughs> <laughs> now is that cause of age or because you don't get to practice as much cause of spring training? It's he's getting he's getting a little old. Yeah, I can, I can I can hit it past him now. But T, I'm not letting him move up. He he keeps bitching about wanting to move up. And I'm like, no, nah, <laughs> you still hit it far enough where you're gonna have to play back here with me. So, uh, but he's good. I mean, he's he used to be really good, and then when I got to the point where I was playing all sorts of sports, he kind of put golf aside and started coaching me. And his game, 
isn't what it used to be, but you know, he's still got the hands. Hey, Whit, Todd again, man. The transition of getting traded, you know, it's tough. I've been traded or picked up uh, by six different teams, not as many as uh, Kratzy over here through his career. But um, is there somebody that you look to lean on? Like you got a locker mate or a buddy there that's like, you know what, get acclimated more with a new team that you're with? Yeah, when I came over, it was – I'd known Chappie, Matt Chapman, a little bit just from playing against them really throughout – the course of my career from double a on and um so we we we've known each other just not really on that personal of a level because we never played together um but he was a guy that that really helped get me familiar and, and comfortable with the team um everybody was great though i mean uh, from the time i got traded you know guys were reaching out and um it didn't take long to get comfortable in, the, in that clubhouse so i was i was fortunate there let me uh, let me get you a little bit. Let me get you a little bit comfort. I need to know. My roomie is your manager. My first ever roommate, John Schneider. We were drafted together. Wow. He was a thirteenth round pick, and I was way later than that. But we roomed <laughs> together, and so I need to know one story that nobody knows about John Schneider, and then I'll try to top it because because I, I enjoy being like AJ Tommy Topper. <laughs> Schneid. Oh, uh, well, you know, I haven't – I don't know if I can give you that yet, Kratz. I mean, I, oh. I'm, I'm still relatively new to the team and haven't um, haven't got to experience Schneid too much outside of uh, Skipper Schneid. And so I'm hoping to, to break that barrier and um, circle back with me in maybe a couple months and I can, I can provide you a better story, hopefully. Okay, so have you ever played with a manager that's as big as him with as much swag? Usually the swaggy managers are the little guys that, like, fit into the <laughs> tiny gear. Have you ever played for a manager that has that much swag? He has. He's got some swag. There's no doubt about that. He is proud of his shoes. He is proud of his glasses. He's proud of his beard. And, uh, yeah, he's, he, he's rocking it for sure. Jersey boy. Yep. Hey. There ain't nothing better than that, big dog. You'll get to know that pretty soon. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> you can get in with the cutoff. T- hey, you're uh, fitting in already, dude. Perfect. If I, if I had the guns. I'm just trying to fit in. That, that's all. That's all I can ask. Hey, that's a win in my book. Wit knows, too. They, they'd be practicing and working out in the mornings. I would, too. But I'm like, I don't have to play baseball, so I'd be working out differently when I knew him back in uh, – uh, in Chatham, Massachusetts, playing for the for the Chatham A's. Question for you, though, Wade. I remember you said this at one point last year when you moved teams. You said Toronto, they do, like, little post-game talks sometimes. What was that about? You know, like, where they'd hang out, right, in the clubhouse and, like, just chit-chat about the game, maybe kick back, have a drink or something? Is that, is that a thing? Is that still going on? Because I think that's really cool, and I, I don't think most teams do that, right? Like, don't most teams go home or guys are in their phone? Right. No, it is. It's it's – Guys that love baseball. And, you know, there's a – we got a lot of guys that come from baseball families and whose dads played in, base, in in the game back when you did that type of stuff, you know, back back when you would hang out and talk about the game and have a beer. And and, and we got, you know, we got Bo, we got Vladdy, we got Kevin, we got Varsho now. Um, that's what these guys grew up around. And so I think that sort of became – the thing and it's it's great and i really uh it's cool to sit sit around and and decompress and talk about the game and just just hang with each other that's the best part about playing this game in my opinion I, like so i love that because we used to do that you know we'd sit around after the game and drink beer and and talk yeah. about whatever try to get the young guys involved now when you're sitting around with Bo Bichette, have you asked him, like, hey, how do you grow hair like that? Like, what's your product line? Does he, I mean, he needs his own product line. Maybe I'm thinking you should come out, you know, grow your hair out like Bo. You guys can start a product line, figure out, you know, conditioner. We should. Yeah, we should. I don't know if I, I don't know if, I don't know how long it would take me to get hair like that, first of all. Uh, could you get the, at least get to like the do rag, right? Like the, whatever you call it, the headband thing he's got, you know, when he, he shakes his, shakes his head and gets the hair going. Yeah, yeah. It seems, you know, he's got it down, but it seems exhausting to try to keep up with it. It does. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if I'd be up for it, but, uh, you know, it's he, he rocks it, that's for sure. Hey, Whit, um, speaking of rules, man, new rules have been implemented here this year. I, I think you're on the rules committee. Uh, 
big process that went down. Umpires got to learn on a lot of new things. You have to learn in a lot of new things. Um, talk to us about it. How's it been going with uh, the new the, the clock and, uh, you know, trying to speed up the game a little bit, man? What are your thoughts about that? It's going to be an adjustment. I don't think it's going to be – I think it's going to be relatively good for the game. Uh, guys are just – guys are working slow. Guys were working slow the last couple of years. And, you know, we're trying to – I don't know, the league thinks this will incorporate more action in the game and encourage guys to put the ball in play, throw more strikes, yada, yada. And it, it, it might. Um, but it's been a – I've played in three games now and uh, haven't seen, you know, I haven't seen an infraction. Um, I haven't seen any instance that would cause me to be concerned. Uh, but I have been talking to umpires. And, you know, I, I was talking uh, the other day. I was saying, you know, what happens here? Because they're, they're, they're being super strict on the amount of time in between innings and when the pitcher can throw his last pitch, when the Kedrick can throw it down, stuff like that. So I said, what happens if we're in the first base dugout? I'm playing left field. In the third out, I, I go into the corner and dive and catch the ball for the third out. And it takes me a second to gather myself and get up. I throw the ball in the, in the stands. The clock's already started. I have to run all the way across the field, go in the dugout, find my helmet, get my helmet, put it on. And by the time that happens, everybody's looking at me because they've already thrown it down and the clock's are, is that, is that going to be a strike? Are you guys going to give some discretion? And they said, no, it's going to be a strike. It's just kind of tough luck. And I was like, I don't think that's right. And that doesn't wow. seem right. And so I called the guys on the rules committee. They're like, no, that's not right. They're supposed to give you discretion. So I'm like, all right, well, y'all need to talk because apparently we got some wires crossed about certain things. And so, I mean, there's going to be situations like that, that, that come up that, you know, we're going to have to work through. And, um, you know, fortunately, I think already there was a, wasn't it like Atlanta and Boston guy got strike three or ball four or something to end the game. And so fortunately that's happening early in spring. So we can, we can work through some stuff. Wit, what do you got? What do you got on your uh, over under on stolen bases? Now the bigger bases, are you like, I'm back to being a 40 guy? Yeah, you know the bigger bases are. Uh, the, I think I think I'll get maybe an extra bag or two that I might have been out before. But it's the clock. The clock is, is going to be a big factor in stealing bases. So, um, you know, it's it's a it's a little bit more of a unique situation here because I'm I'm hitting um, probably be hitting further down the lineup, and you got guys like uh, George Springer and and Bo and Blatty coming up that you might want to be a little more hesitant. And make sure you're actually going to get that bag. You don't want to get thrown out with those guys hitting. So, but uh, 40, is, 40 is the number that I'm looking at right now. And um, good call. Yeah, I, I would I would like to, to go back to getting 40 back. Sure. Hey, with going, going back to your clock question about you you dive in or your clock answer, like a pitcher. Yeah. Like let's take a pitcher. You're a hitter, and let's say the guy in front of you hits a double, right? And there's a guy on first, and the pitcher has to back up third, back up home. He's running around crazy, right? The ball bounces away a little bit. And he's out of breath. You know, pitchers, they get out of breath. He's huffing and puffing. He's walking back to the mound. They, they start the clock as soon as the play is ended. When do they start that clock? So they're supposed to start it when everybody's, I guess, in a normal position. Like the, when the pitcher is back on the mound with the ball in a, uh, like, a, I forget the verbiage, but like a normal, like, routine position that's when the clock's supposed to start uh so they they, they are going to give the guy discretion that are they're supposed to let him get back to the mound now if he's taking his sweet time you know they might say something to him and then start the clock if he doesn't speed it up a little bit um but yeah it's it's all it's all supposed to be kind of discretionary and um it's it's gonna i'm sure there'll be some some uh umpires that that hear about it throughout the course so of the year so, so like Let's say it's in the World Series. So you guys, the Blue Jays get to the World Series. It's game seven, 3-2 count. The pitcher doesn't get the ball off in time. Is there going to be an umpire that's going to be like, yep, game over, World Series over, they didn't beat the shot clock? That's what they're saying. They're saying they're going to be – They're, they're going to be very strict about it. And, uh, you know, 
we've none of the play, you know, none, none of the players voted for this. Um, we, we all voted against it. Um, not that we were against it, but we were against like the example you just made. We don't want, uh, we don't want that to. You stumped him, AJ. You stumped Uh-oh. him. We'll get him back. We'll get him back. Must be in the minor league facility. Minor league internet. Minor league internet is not sharp. I've been there. No, that, that, that's, see, that's interesting, though, and I want to get the follow-up there from Wit because you have that rules committee. He's on it, but it's kind of rigged because there's more non-players than players, so it's really just like a gesture. But my thing is, I, I'm just curious, like, did the players not want to pitch clock at all? Or did they want more input on how it works? Well, no, but they also can implement rules and not, the players have no say in it, right? Can't yes. They, the, the, the commissioner can go to the player association and say, hey, we're doing this and you can't stop us. Yes, but in, in fairness... But that doesn't make sense either because the players why? are the product. The players are the product, but they don't always... I, I, I'm all about that. I mean, we're, we're talking to players every day on this show. At the same time... I think, and many others think, the pitch clock's a great thing. And here, Wit's back, and Wit, we're talking about this just now. You're on the committee. The committee, though, is kind of rigged because there's more non-players than players. So it's really just nice gesture. You guys talk things out. Were the players, like, anti-pitch clock, period? Or, hey, we want to have more input on how this works? Because, I mean, me, from the I'm the only fan perspective here on the show, like, of these guys, I love the way it speeds things up. I'm just wondering, like you guys are talking about, if there should be some leeway sometimes. Is that what the guys were kind of pissed about? Yeah, yeah. We weren't against it uh, at all. It was just we, like like AJ just said, you know, we don't want this to be a determining factor in a crucial game. And I guess there's no way around that. Um, but, yeah, it, 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 like the disengagement rule with the pitchers, like you only pick twice. To me, that's they want more action in the game. That's kind of a lazy way to go about it. Uh, same with getting rid of the shift. You know, obviously, the shift was a lot more, uh, I guess, polarizing. There, were, there was more opinions from both sides on that, and it was more split from a player's perspective. Um, but to me, like the shift, I don't. You should be able to play your defense where you want to play them, and uh, that they, they shouldn't limit you to do that. I mean, it's like telling me Justin Jefferson is killing me and I can't put a safety over top to protect him. Like, wh- I mean, what are we doing? That, that's, that, that, that's, my, that's my opinion on that. But, yeah, I mean, players were – they weren't against the pitch clock at all. It was just we're concerned that we're overshooting it. And, um, you know, hopefully that won't be the case and guys will, will get used to it quickly and it'll be smooth. Um, so – We'll, we'll see how it goes. Listen, if if the shift was normalized, I still probably have two or three more years left in my in my <laughs> career. Just to be honest, I, I'm a big believer in not having the shift. You know, no offense to what you think. I think I'd get those hundred more hits a year. But who's who's saying that? <laughs> Talking about struggling, which I did a lot in my career, of course, too. Let's be honest. Um, you went you went a year or last year when you were struggling a little bit. I think Renke talked to you about it too as well, man. What what did he say? He had some good words of encouragement for you to kind of get <laughs> get you going a little bit. Yeah, you know, I yeah, last year was a it was a tough tough year. I think I went like three for April to start the year, and uh, I think I had I think I counted I think there were six diving plays made on me in the month of April alone, and you know. They always tell you, don't get caught up in results, you know, just trust the process. Well, yeah, when you look up and you're hitting 80, you know, that's 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 hard to do. You want to get results. You want you want them to look better. Even though I'm like, oh, well, I feel good. Yeah, well, you're not doing anything. So it's that, that I dug myself a, a nice deep hole and um, fortunately finished the year pretty strong to salvage a somewhat okay year uh, from an individual standpoint. But when I got traded, you know, I was going around telling – Bye to everybody, giving everybody hugs, and um, didn't see Zach because this was like two hours before first pitch. I think he was out throwing a bullpen or something. Um, but later in the day, I get a text from him, and it's it's there's no words. It's just a screenshot of a tweet from must have been a Blue Jay writer, and but it said like Wits hitting whatever I was hitting, but his expected. Is like I, I would have been hitting like 280 with like my slug would have been like 
four something. It was just what my numbers were expected versus what they were. And that was Green Tea's like goodbye to me. Like, you know, I know you're playing bad, but you're not playing that bad. And that was just in the most grinky way possible that he that he told me that. It was he's 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 great. I loved playing with him and it, every day was a new story, it seemed like. I need I need another Grinky story because he grew up. I live in Orlando. He grew up in Orlando. He's kind of an Orlando, you know, legend now that all these stories have started coming out. So I need some more Grinky stories. Like I want to hear because <laughs> you know there's all these 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 stories about all these things he says. So like, what's the best? I guess slash worst craziest thing he's ever said to you. We we were uh, we were on the bus. Uh, we bust from St. Louis back to Kansas City. Because uh, there was, we got, I think we got snowed out or rained out, and it would just would have been quicker for us to drive back instead of waiting on the plane to come. And anyway, so we're on the bus, and Grinky's pitching the next day, and he and Salvi are um, in the in the front, and I'm sitting behind Grinky, and they're talking, they're going over the uh, game plan for the next day, and going over guys that like to swing early in the count, and um, they were, I forget, I forget who we were playing, but they're like, yeah, this guy. You know, he'll swing early. Uh, he's got he a, lot, a lot of damage early. Um, so we might want to try to, you know, make sure we execute a good pitch OO. And uh, he turned around to me and goes, you like to swing first pitch a lot, right? And I was like, um, I mean, I don't – I'm not for taking a strike. So, yeah, if it's a good pitch, I, I like to swing. And he goes, yeah, I think I remember that when I was with Houston. They told me that. And then I told them, I said, you know, I'll just throw a fastball away. What's the worst you could do? Flip it to right? I was like – I guess. <laughs> Basically telling me that I got no pop is what he was telling me in a, in a nonchalant way. And uh, and he meant no he meant nothing by it. He was just like, Yeah, I'll just throw you a fastball away and worst case scenario you hit a little soft line drive to right. All right. I didn't know what, this is like early in the year, so I was like, I'm still trying to feel Zach out. Uh but it got to the point it's great when you kind of give it back to him. He he, he, we, we call him like a robot because he gets like he doesn't know how to pro he's got really witty sayings but it takes him a little bit to get it and so when you say something back to him he thinks it's funny he, it's like his, you can see like the wheels turning in his head and he just kind of like locks up and it's you know you got him he's uh he's a treat he's one of a kind <laughs> that's good that's that's that yeah have you given him shit back we've Crazy. had some run-ins yeah, we've you've had, had some run-ins. Run we've had some run-ins. Yeah, we've had some run-ins. <laughs> Great. Well, we got you every day. So, hey, Wit, this was awesome. Really appreciate having you on. Looking forward to having you on throughout the season. You like this? Yeah, this is great. What you guys are doing is awesome. Really enjoyed the uh, conversations you've had so far with different guys. Thank you, Wit. Hey, have fun out there. You know, keep hitting the gym. For, forget 40 stolen bases, Scott, Kratzy. 40 wait, homers this Scott, year, baby. Let's have a GTO, gun off baby. GTO, oh, no, let's go. I'm trying to get like Kratz, man. No, Where dude, Brawny, show him your guns. Like, wait, no, let's have a Kratz, gun off, dude. Kratz, let me see. Show, get, give him a little Benny biceps real quick. Come on. It's too cold in here. Everything's colder when it's – everything's smaller when it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> Kratz, how, how many kids you got now? Three. I feel like you had like five when I, when we were playing together. But No, <laughs> see, like left. – I would have had five. I would have had five, but I kept getting <laughs> traded so often that it was like, no, it got kiboshed. Like, mm -hmm. all those actions got kiboshed. Like, I'm done. They're all like, boys, like, though, right? Two boys. Two boys. When when we were playing together, it was two boys, and my daughter was just a little baby. But they were always in the clubhouse raking in the cage. Yeah. yeah. I think they were just so off the wall that it felt like there was five of them. They, <laughs> they, were, well, they were well behaved. Well behaved. <laughs> <laughs> clearly not <laughs> clearly not <laughs> i love it i love it wait we'll uh we'll probably be at the needing at some point in a few weeks so we'll see you then cheers man yeah sounds good i got some cutoffs waiting for you guys yes let's yeah. go yeah. yes